Hi, and welcome to Better Boating in Connecticut. Uh, we're bringing you our show today here at the DEP Marine Headquarters in Old Lyme, and specifically from our Education Center here on campus. I'm your host today, Wendy Flynn, along with Jerry Desmond. And today's show is going to be about Connecticut certification, registration, and classes. So Jerry, why don't you start us off with some registration information? Thank you, Wendy. Okay, let's uh, start off our show today talking a little bit about Connecticut registrations. Um, it's in, I like to start with registrations because later on in the show we're going to talk a little bit about certifications and vessels that are required to be registered here in Connecticut are the very vessels that we are concerned about whether people actually need certificates or licenses, if you will, to operate. So let's first start with uh, the registrations here in Connecticut and what needs to be registered. Here in Connecticut, all vessels with a motor and any sailboats 19 and a half feet or longer have to be registered to operate in Connecticut waters here. And also, in addition to that, if you have uh, vessels that are out-of-state vessels that come here to bring their boats into our waters to operate, and they happen to keep their boats here more than 60 days during a calendar year, including uh, boats that are documented, then those vessels need to pay a registration fee as well, and they need to apply for a certificate of decal. And we'll talk more about that after. Um, so starting off, um, this is what our registration would look like here in Connecticut. As you can see on this registration way up in this corner, um, we have a vessel number that gets assigned to the boat by the Department of Motor Vehicle, where you register your boat here in Connecticut. And also there's a hull identification number here that's on here on the registration as well. That's an important number. That should be matching up with your, uh, the hull identification number on your boat, which is it's similar to a serial number, if you will. When they, when they make a boat or they build a boat, they assign a hull identification number to that vessel, and that should be corresponding to the one that's on the registration. Um, moving right along. Uh, we register here, as I said, at the Department of Motor Vehicle. Uh, registration um, is renewed every year, uh, once a year. There are other states in our, around the United States where they register every two years or every three years, but here in Connecticut, we register every year. And our expiration date here in Connecticut is on April 30th every year. Um, and usually our renewals will go out after the first of the year and people will start renewing their registrations when they get stuff in the mail um, from the DMV to do so. Um, if you register your boat here in Connecticut and you decide you're going to sell it to somebody else in Connecticut, um, the numbers that are assigned to that vessel, um, the CT numbers, if you will, that are on the bow that are put on there, those, those numbers stay with the boat. And it'll always stay with the boat until that vessel gets sold out of state. Once out of sold out of state, they'll have to change those numbers up. Um, as I had said, um, vessels that are uh, registered out of state, maybe somebody from another state that likes to come and stay in Connecticut for the summer, or documented vessels that come here um, and put their boats here for the summer, perhaps, at a marina, uh, for more than 60 days in a calendar year, they will pay a registration fee as well, and they will get a certificate of decal as a result. Um, one of the other programs we have going now is uh, there's a, uh, a vessel identify, uh, excuse me, a, a, uh, a vessel uh, hull identification number that, um, a verification program that goes, that's going on right now. And what we're asking people is that, that have a vessel that re-register their boat is to confirm that the hull identification number that's on the vessel matches the one that's on the registration. If you find that your registration hull identification number is not matching up with your vessel, you can contact us here at Marine Headquarters and we'll assist you in um, helping you get that corrected with the DMV and, and point you in the right direction to take care of that problem. So once you go to register your vessel and you walk in the DMV and they assign you a uh, number, a vessel number for your boat, um, they don't actually give you the numbers to put on the boat. You need to go get those numbers. And you go, uh, to, you might go to one of the marine stores, or you might go to a hardware store, or you might even put them on yourself. Maybe you paint them on there. But there's certain characteristics that those numbers must have. And we can see them here. Um, they have to be in contrasting in color to the hull. So a light hull needs dark numbers. A dark hull needs light numbers. They have to be at least three inch block lettering, and they have to be able to be read from 100 feet away. Um, law enforcement needs to be able to see those. 
And once you get those letters, um, you, you put them on the bow, on both sides of the bow, read from left to right, as you can see here on this vessel. The CT number here for a Connecticut reg a registered boat. Um, you'd have CT, a space or a hyphen, some numbers, a space or a hyphen, and then some letters. And then you have your certificate of uh, decal um, that comes after, which is, looks like an expiration sticker, if you will. It indicates the year of expiration of that particular registration. You also need to have a copy of your registration on board at all times so you can present that to law enforcement if they need to see that. And you should also have a copy of your, uh, or at least your original, not just a copy, but your actual um, certificate or license, if you will, that needs to be carried with you as well. And we're going to talk about more about those in a second. So as we move on here, and I start to talk about how old you need to be to operate what vessel out there in Connecticut or personal watercraft, those, those uh, ages, age requirements, if you will. As we move on to here, um, the age requirements are for anybody who operates in our Connecticut waters. So I'm going to go over some age requirements here, and then I'm going to go over some certificates. But understand that as we move forward here, I'm going to focus on Connecticut residents. I'm going to try to focus on them as we move into the certificate world. Um, but when it comes to age requirements, that's global, anybody who comes here. So in Connecticut, um, if you want to operate a power boat, any boat with a motor, um, either under 10 horsepower or over 10 horsepower, all the way up, and these motors get really big these days, up to two, 300 horsepower, as we know. Um, any of the power boats, if you want to operate that here in Connecticut, you have to be at age 12 or older. To operate alone, you also must have your certificate. So you have to be 12 and older and have your certificate in order to operate those vessels in Connecticut. If you are under 12 and you were lucky enough to go get your boating certificate here in Connecticut um, and you want to operate a vessel alone, you can only operate 10 horsepower or less. When it comes to jet skis or personal watercraft, you have to be at least age 16 to operate alone in Connecticut. And you must have a certificate of personal watercraft operation. Um, and we're going to talk about those certifications in a minute, the different ones that are out there. Um, so 12 and older to operate any of the power boats alone, 16 and older to operate any of the personal watercraft or jet skis, if you will, alone. Now, here in Connecticut, or actually the ages, like I said, pertain to everyone, but focusing again here in Connecticut, can I have somebody teach me to operate a boat? Uh, what happens if I'm not old enough to operate uh, a boat alone? in certain circumstances, uh, can I do so? And the answer is yes. If you are age 15 and under, you can be a trainee here in Connecticut. So if I wanted to be, if I was 15 and under, um, I can train on a boat, remember I said 12 and older to operate alone with a certificate, but if you're 15 and under and you don't have a certificate, you can do so on a boat with somebody who's 18 or older who's had their certificate themselves for at least two years. Um, so when it comes to a, a personal watercraft, that's a different story. You can't, you, if you're 15 and under, you must have a certificate of personal watercraft operation to um, train. Because remember I said before, you need to be 16 or older on a jet ski to operate that alone, as long as you had your certificate. But if you're 15 and under, I can't operate it alone. So can I train on it? Yes. But in the case of a jet ski, you must have your certificate of personal watercraft operation in order to train. And the trainer, the person who's on there teaching you, has to be 18 years or older and have their certificate as well. So those are the circumstances uh, where someone can be trained on a boat if they don't have their certificate and they're 15 and under, or on a jet ski and they do have their certi certificate and they happen to be 15 and under, and they're training with an adult who's 18 or older. That brings us up to our Safe Water Skiing Endorsement Law. Um, and I'm going to talk here about both Connecticut residents and out-of-state residents as we move forward. Um, as of October 1st, 2015, a new law went into effect called the Safe Water Skiing Endorsement Law. And the law says this. It says that if you want to operate a boat 
or a jet ski and tow a skier behind that or a tuber, somebody on an inflatable device, then these are the requirements you have to satisfy to do so. You need to be at least age 16. Everybody doing so must have a valid boating certificate either from Connecticut or if you're from out of state, a certificate from one of our reciprocal states, which is New York, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire. So you need one of those certificates that I just described. Again, age 16 or older to drive that boat and pull the skier. And the last thing you need to have is a safe water skiing endorsement if you got one of those certificates after October 1st, 2015. If you received your boating, one of those boating certificates I just described, and you got it before October 1st, 2015, then you're grandfathered into the program and you don't have to go out and seek a, a, a water skiing endorsement out. You're grandfathered in. So, again, looking at my flow chart here, if you obtained your certificate before October 1st, any one of those certificates you're grandfathered in. If you have not, if you did not obtain it before October 1st, 2015, and you still had to get it after that or you got it after that, and you took one of the Connecticut classes, one of our Connecticut approved classes, you will receive that water ski endorsement or would have in the class itself. If you, if you got one of the reciprocal state certificates after October 1st, 2015, um, or you, are, you have a Coast Guard license, which is one of the um, certificates that you can also have, in addition to either having a valid boating certificate from Connecticut, a reciprocal state or a Coast Guard license, and you got either a certificate from a reciprocal state or from the Coast Guard, a Coast Guard license after October 1st, 2015, then you have to go seek out the safe water skiing endorsement. And the way that you do that is you, um, you go online. Currently, you can go online at our website, at the DEP boating page website, and you'll be able to click on an icon there that allows you to take the mini course um, and take an exam and get your safe water skiing endorsement. Um, in the future, um, we have a class right now. That online course is built in right now on our website and it's for free. In the future, there's gonna be a more robust course that'll still be free to take the course. Um, and if you go to uh, get the safe water skiing endorsement, there might be a small fee affiliated with that. But um, at this point here, you can go onto our website and you can take that course and get your safe water skiing endorsement free if you need to seek it out. Okay, now again, focusing, I'm gonna go back, focus back into Connecticut. Uh, residents and talk about our certificates here or people that have obtained our certificate. Um, we have several different styles of certificates that are out there and about on the water. Um, one is our safe boating certificate. This is one of the original certificates. Connecticut was one of the leaders out there when it came to um, boating certificates and licensing, if you will, to operate vessels. And our first one was a safe boating certificate. So these were um, the original ones that were out there. They are plastic cards. They look like a little license. They're plastic. Many of you may have them. Um, and then after that, what happened was, if um, you got that safe boating certificate and you wanted to upgrade, because you wanted to drive a, a personal watercraft or a jet ski, you wanted to do that. Back a ways back, if you had that safe boating certificate and you wanted to drive a jet ski, you'd have to go take a two-hour class and you were, you'd be able to update excuse me, uh, upgrade to a personal watercraft certificate that looked like this. After a period of time, things changed and all of our classes became combination classes. So for quite a while now, all of our classes have been combination classes and when you take a Connecticut approved combination class, you get the, the superior license, which is the, person, the Certificate of Personal Watercraft Operation. This particular Certificate of Personal Watercraft Operation is good for both boats and jet skis. In today's world, all the classes are combination classes, and the result is you walk away with a Certificate of Personal Watercraft Operation, like these. The only thing today now, a few years ago, um, things changed a little bit. We're still gonna issue you a Certificate of Personal Watercraft Operation, 
But in today's world, um, it's all online. You don't have to, in the old days, what happened was you used to have to uh, make out an application and you'd send your $50 fee up to Hartford and you'd wait for your, those uh, cards to come in the mail, the Certificate of Personal Watercraft Operation or way back the Safe Boating Certificate. In this world today, when you go to take a class, you finish that class, the instructors load you into our system, um, and Wendy's going to talk to you a bit about that in a minute, um, where you go into our system, and you're able to go on right after the class, put your information into our system, purchase your certificate, and print out your certificate of personal watercraft operation, and it looks like this now. And you'll see on here um, all kinds of your personal information, certificate of personal watercraft operation, number is signed, and what I'm going to talk about soon here, which is a safe, the, or excuse me, the safe water skiing endorsement. So this safe water skiing endorsement will appear on your certificate uh, once you print it out. Um, okay, moving on. So here's the, a picture of the three certificates that are out there. So um, you may have friends that have the cards. The good news today is, and um, when you go to uh, if you lost your certificate, this is current one, the paper one that gets printed out, if you lost it, you can go back into our system and you can reprint this certificate for free. In, uh, in the older days, um, if you lost one of these uh, cards that we used to issue, you had to pay $25 to replace them. But currently today, once you're in our system and you've paid for your certificate, it's always available for you to reprint. Okay. I think, uh, Wendy, I'll uh, have you come up now and talk a little bit about our website. And if people do want to get a class to get a certificate, uh, we can talk to them about that. All right. All right. Thanks, Jerry. Yeah. So I just want to briefly go over uh, how you can find a class and how, of course, to reprint your voting certificate if you need it. So this picture is what is, uh, what is on our newly revised website. So if you were to click on up top on voting education certifications and videos, you would, uh, this website would, or this new page would appear. So it has all of the classes that we offer in Connecticut. And for the regular, if you wanted to get your Certificate of Personal Watercraft Operation Certificate, you would click on the top where it says Combination Safe Boating Personal Watercraft Operation. So that class is eight hours, and there's a list of classes down here on the bottom. Those are the classes that we sponsor through the DEP, and they run anywhere between um, a free class or up to $25. They're typically during the week, you know, a couple hours uh, each, uh, a couple weekend, uh, weekday evenings. Or if you need a weekend class, your best bet is to either click on the Coast Guard Auxiliary or the Power Squadron link, or right below it, the Approved Safe Boating Course Agents. Those classes are oftentimes on weekends. They are still the same length and time, eight hours. You'll get the same education and the, you'll end up getting the same boating certificate or a certificate of personal watercraft operation. So it, in order to take a class, you have to have a conservation ID number. And you get that number, it's free to sign up for it, and you get that number at the online sportsman's licensing. You can get there um, through our website. You'll be able to link there. And this number is unique to you, so um, this is where we will upload your, uh, your diploma that you've passed the class, so you can purchase your boating certificate. This is the same database where your fishing license and your hunting information will be as well. So if you passed a, hunting, a hunter's ed class, you can also purchase your hunting license there. So if we, uh, we can zoom in right here to, this is the screen that you would click on. And in, if you're searching for your, your conservation ID number, you would use this bottom section here. So for identity type, the select identity, that's either your driver's license or your social security number. And then of course your last name, your date of birth, you'll have to search for yourself. Either you'll find yourself or you won't find yourself. If you can't find yourself, you have to give a, us a call at the boating office and we'll be happy to help, that, help you out for that information. After you've taken the class, you would put in here your date of birth and your conservation ID number. From there, you'd be able to purchase your boating certificate. And that <laughs> wraps it up for me. Jerry, do you have uh, any final words to say? Um, the only other thing I um, would like to say is I think that our uh, team has done very well, our production crew, and I'd like to bring them up for one last message. Sure. And we'll uh, conclude our show. We want to thank everybody for watching our shows up to now. We Absolutely. had our first show already. So um, before we go, let's uh, just give our last message to everybody. And let's just say that 
Boating is serious fun, and always wear your life jacket. Bye-bye.